everyone and welcome back. I'm Laura Nicole with Firecracker Projects and I'm here to do a weekly update. I actually figured out after I finished the last video there was some haul I didn't show you. So this video will include that little tiny bit of haul that was left over, some finishes, and some talk about frogging and how that made my life really difficult this week. So the let's start with the finish so my husband has been doing his first ever cross stitch project which is the x files by clouds factory this is on clouds factory website um those of you who are in the u.s and no one has mentioned this in videos that i have seen i think clouds factory is in italy so when we purchased this from them, it considered that a foreign transaction. So we got a small little transaction fee on our bank account, but I was a little freaked out about it because I was like, we haven't been anywhere foreign recently. So, so if that happens to you, that's what it's from. But look at this. Isn't that nice? So this is a great first effort um, by my husband. There's a few little mistakes those of you who cross stitch all the time might see. But I think that when you're first starting to cross stitch, the most important thing to worry about is where the boxes are. Are you doing the right color? Um, he ended up not having all of Mulder's hair, but he didn't care, so he didn't want to frog it. So pretty awesome. Then I had a mini finish on my afghan. And you know, every time I'm peeling one of those stickers off that bag that I finished a letter, I'm super excited now because I have been doing this so long that I'm tired. <laughs> so I actually got to finish P is for Pig this week. He's looking pretty good. I don't know. And you notice that the definition really comes out on these when you backstitch them. So I'm really loving that. So this week, we, um, a couple of us in Stitch Mania, we're going to do whip a thons on the summer solstice, which was June. 20th. So I touched a couple of my whips this week on that day. Um, I don't think I did any more on the afghan besides the pig <laughs> um, on that day and that you haven't seen. On the 20th I did touch the Laura plantation. I'll show you where we are with that. we go that's most of the time when I stitch I before I move on to another project I finish the whole thread but this time I didn't because we were doing that whip -a -thon. so a little bit more of this black work here this is in $37.99, so it's not quite that deep black of $310. It's sort of like a grayish black. Okay. And those of you who do black work, my back is sort of, it's not really messy, but it's sort of messy. How do you choose where to go? Like these lines, do you go straight down the line? Do you do the lines that are, like these are all on the same level, so would you do them all just instead of going down the straight line, would you go across? How do you approach it? As you see, I'm right now I'm approaching it by doing the line until it meets another line and coming back up I'm going back down like that that's my current approach but I don't know that that's a 
proper approach. This is the first sort of black workish type of work I've ever done. I did touch my Janlin Amerages kit. I filled in, before I just had this darker blue, I filled in this lighter blue from that. Believe it or not, this kit is fairly, fairly easy. And once again, there's a running thread. I am debating about whether or not to do the beach romance, which is very similar to this. It just has a different saying and goes a different way. Let me pull, let me pull this out so you can see this better. So the beach romance has sort of this landscape view and it has a different saying in it than this one does. So if you remember, I'm now doing this one for my husband and I, so our initials will be down here. Um, and the other one is for some other people in our family. So at first I thought I was going to do both kits for July, which in Stitch Mania, Stitch Along is a summery type of Stitch Along. Or am I just going to do beach romance? I think right now I'm leaning towards just doing beach romance since it's for other people. And this will just come up in my normal alphabetical rotation sometime during the month. Because I think if I did both of them, I might get a little confused because they're so, so similar. Uh, I don't know. I haven't figured that one out yet. But those are my thoughts so far. Uh, for that uh, stitch along on the summer solstice, I also worked a little bit on Black Masquerade. I'm very excited. I had to um, bobbinate a new thread, which I haven't used in this yet, but it's a bright, bright purple. So I'm a little excited. We're going to have some bright purple probably next time I show you this, whenever that is. Yeah, this is, it looks black because this the there's like several different shades of black in this one and then there's this deep deep purple which against the blacks is hard to see but yeah that's that's more real to life is this deep purple so it sort of mixes in with the blacks on camera but you can see it in real life so while this is a Black Masquerade by Mystic Stitch, um, I have lost the picture to this, but on the website, if you look at it, the background of her, like it's a, it's a woman in a Mardi Gras mask, and the background just looks black, but it's not. So that's pretty cool. It's not just one 310 all the way over. Then I got to my Scattered Kindness. Now remember, Scattered Kindness is a Alessandra Adelaide Needleworks group design uh, that she handed out to us when we had 2,000 members, face group, Facebook group, and it was charted in only black 310. So I started doing the letter S. You can't tell it, but I've mixed the metallics with a variegated blue DMC. And I'm wondering as that variegation goes, right now I'm at a really light part. So how that will look, or if it will look too different. But I am loving this. Blue metallic from DMC. So that's pretty cool. I have started getting some techniques together with metallic threads that I've gotten off of different helping 
websites. And one of the things that people said, and I really did not take stock into until recently now that I'm using all of these metallic threads, which is you need to make a little knot with your needle and the thread, like a little slip knot. so that it doesn't pull because if you don't and you just thread your needle like you do with normal cotton floss with me especially DMC me metallic floss I'm thinking the same would happen with Krennic but I don't know but DMC metallic floss actually has floss in the center of it that's regular cotton floss I think and as you pull on it that center starts to show and so really you can, some, some of the stitchers I have heard online say use like really small snippets of thread like this big. So that only gets you about 10 stitches if that. Um, I'm using probably snippets this big and doing that slip knot. And what's happening is, is that thread is not showing. When I was just doing it the normal way, the that inside thread was coming out eventually and so you'd have to cut the thread. So I'm gonna look at my ore jar to see if I can show you guys what I mean by that thread starts to show eventually. Now that one looks perfect. <laughs> oh here's here's a good example of that. So I don't know if you can see this. I'll get a white piece of paper for you. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a metallic piece of thread. And the center has started come unraveling out of it. So this little piece right here is actually not metallic and is just a piece of thread that's coming out of the center. And using a long piece of metallic thread or not slip knotting it at your needle will result in this. And someone said it's because this thread is not really meant to be pulled. And so as you're pulling, you're pulling it apart. But for whatever reason, that slip knot gives it enough tension that you're really not pulling the thread. You're pulling that slip knot. And so anything above that slip knot will, will come apart. But all of your stitches in the fabric won't come apart. So do the slip knot method. It'll save you lots of lots of energy so I think that was all for my stitch-a-thon that I got to that day as you know I have other things in life I had to do unfortunately I hate it when my real life interferes with my stitching life but it happens so another thing that happened to me is I had to frog my Alessandra Adelaide uh, advent calendar, which I told you about, and all of the metallic to my stiachathon. My stiachalong. All of the metallic in my stiachalong was wrong. <laughs> so I had to redo it, which was awful. So my orc jar is looking very colorful these days. <laughs> and yeah, as I frog, I just throw the little wee bits of thread that, you know, come off in here because you really can't or I have found I can't use them again sometimes you can um, if you're frogging while you're doing it but if you already cut off the threads I find I can't use them again so all of my metallic siachathon is right now but I didn't really I got to all the metallic from this week's siachathon so this is all the metallic we've had so far all of this and those of you who've worked with metallic threads know how crazy that is that amount there is a another motif I think it's a rock guys it looks like 
this is a person or something standing in front of like a rock colored thing. I don't know what it is. I still, I don't have a guess as to what we're stitching yet. So, so as you can see, I'm getting far better at the metallics. And this is what my metallic back looks like. It's not fantastic. It's not fantastic. But it's not horrible, apparently. I thought it was really horrible, and then I've seen other people's. So, not bad. And you can see on the back, I don't know if you can see, but there you can tell where some of them have come apart a little bit, some of the metallic threads. But on the front, see they've stayed intact, which is what you want. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty darn cool. I also this week started on W because June the 24th was um, a stitch along for the color pink. And on my afghan, W is for wolf and the W is pink. So here is where I've started there on the W. I've gotten one of the first legs done. This is the beginning of both two middle legs of the W. They meet at the top, so. So the law, this is one leg and then another leg comes down sort of like that. So that's pretty cool. Only one more picture to start on this and I will start in every picture with the exception of the child's name and birth date. So I've decided on this one I'm only going to show you the publicly finished. I'm going to call it a PFO. I think I'm making something up. Probably not. PFO. We probably use the term PFO to <laughs> to mean something else. But I think I'm going to mean it's going to mean for me publicly finished object because I'm not going to show you the name and birth date. So Although I will show you, I'm thinking about doing the name and birth date and variegated DMC instead of the DMC that is charted for. So if I do that, I'll show you the DMC I'm choosing if I, if I do it differently. If I don't, I'll just tell you I'm going to do it as charted. But we're not there. We're far from being there. I also wanted to share with you what my castle looks like after a couple of treatments. So I think this has probably spent about six hours soaking already. Um, what I did is I took cold water, uh, I think a half cup baking soda, a quarter cup of salt, and soaked this for six, six hours, three hours at a time. And when I took it out of the little mixture, I rinsed it off with distilled water, not regular water from the tap. So as you can see, it looks pretty white. I can still see where some of the damage and the smoke damage was. It doesn't it doesn't smell like smoke damage anymore. So I'm thinking that's good. That's a good change of pace. The I'm trying to think. This area where it was mostly stitched is the worst area. See it? Yeah, you can still see the line. There was a smoke line. So it's certainly not perfect, but if I, you really, the further back I get, you can't tell. It just looks like a white piece of fabric. So, I think I'm going to continue stitching on this guy. And then maybe do a, another three hour soak after all the stitching is done. 
and then iron it and it's going to be what it's going to be but as you can see I think it's degraded the stitching a little bit but I think the only other option I had because I did try washing it other ways was to start over and um, those of you who have done any tree, Teresa Winsler work know that all of this is blended thread <laughs> it took me forever Uh, down here the green parts of the greenery is not that's probably like the only non blended thread that I can remember oh maybe the maybe these weren't blended maybe the, the dark windows weren't blended but the light windows are, are all blended so that's where I'm at with that I'm gonna put this back in the rotation We'll see if we'll get to it at all this this month. I was hoping to get the afghan done as this little girl's birthday is at the end of July. And she'll be one. But I don't know if I could spend the amount of time each day doing that. Like, I think if I spent, I could finish it by the end of July if I spent about four to five hours a day alone on that. And I don't even know if I have, if I'm going to have four or five days, I mean four or five days, four or five hours per day on any given day to stitch on different things, let alone one thing. So we'll see. We'll just see how it comes out. And she's one. And it's a pretty large afghan. Since that's not done on the baby afghan fabric, it is like it could cover myself. So, I, the, there's going to be a bump in the video because it stopped recording. And then, I don't know why I did that. Last time it, last time my phone, I have a Galaxy S6 Edge. And I thought last time it, it let me record for like an hour and a half, but it, it chopped that video into like three videos but I didn't have to stop recording it just recorded the whole time this time it's literally recorded to the I guess the time that it will record to and then stopped and then started over so and I had to repress uh, record so I guess maybe there's a setting that got off on that so I'll work on that <laughs> So I was talking about the afghan and the fact that I wanted to have it done. I really wanted to have it done as a birthday gift for her. I mean, not a birthday gift, but a uh, baby shower gift. But I had to restart so many times that I didn't get finished for the baby shower. Obviously, she's almost a year old. So it's probably not going to get done for her year birthday. But since it's so big and she's a year, so not fully... Uh, knowing the alphabet, etc. yet, I think I still have a little time. So maybe it might be a Christmas gift. I don't know. We'll see. We can only do what we can do, right? So here is the haul portion of the video. This actually was given to me. So sometime in May, I think this happened. Uh, one of our neighbors had told my husband that they were going to the Canaan Town yard sale. So here in New England, in our small little towns, sometimes we have town-wide rummage sales or yard sales. Uh, Enfield, New Hampshire's yard sale is coming up. I think in the, on the 16th of July, I could be wrong about the date, but it's coming up at the beginning of July. I probably will go and check out and see if there's any um, any good deals on any cross stitch stuff. Mainly, what I really want to look for is like DMC and and things that look pretty well taken care of, just that people have stopped stitching and that type of thing. So, but anyways, at the beginning in the, in May, my neighbors said we're going over to the Canaan yard sale, and I and I thought, well. 
I'll go over there if they have any crafting supplies. And so I told my neighbor, be on the lookout for cross-stitching supplies. If you see them, let me know. And I had intended that to mean that we would then go over and look and see... Um, and see what they were offering and if we wanted it and that kind of thing. So it ended up they were on the wrong day. They didn't go to the yard sale, but they had went to some other yard sales a week after, and my neighbor had remembered that I asked for cross-stitching supplies, so she very sweetly bought me some cross-stitching stuff that she found. So, yeah, so she bought me some stuff. I had intended on paying her back, but she said no. It was only like two bucks. So this is what you can get two bucks at a yard sale in New Hampshire. The first one is not really my type of design. Um, and those of you who know me personally will know, like, I'm not really a Hummel person, a Hummel collector or anything like that but my aunt was my aunt who recently passed away in December was a humble collector and this picture is similar to a humble that she loved and had on her fireplace forever so it's a needle treasures counted cross stitch of course and my humble is who the pit, who the artwork is by and they signed it in my Hummel but I guess I'll put my name my initials down here so this is a little sweet cross stitch I probably will finish this um, but I don't know that I'll ever frame it or do anything with it or just sort of have it as like a scrapbooked memory type of deal so when she purchased it, it was already started. So I'm just, it, this, so for me, this is just an object I'll be finishing. Um, I think this is, might have been someone's first attempt at cross stitch. Not all of the crosses go the same way, so I'm going to have to figure out... <laughs> where the how the majority are crossing and do it that way and cross stitch that way but I think it's a pretty fine start and I I like it and I will finish it I'm very thankful it did come with the chart and the threads the only problem I have is I will never ever be able to do this chart again. I'm going to show you a little bit of the chart. I know you guys are going to yell at me. Look at that. Whoever started this, I mean, I, I, I got to admit, I also highlight or cross out on a physical chart, but I don't, I always have a copy. So I'll never be able to do this chart again, I don't think, because I cannot read what's under that marking. Now, I have seen a lot of these charts like this, maybe not this specific one, but a lot of the ones that look like that on eBay. So if you like those little Hummel um, counted cross stitch kits, you might want to look on eBay. That might be where you find that. Um, like I said, this was found at a local yard sale. And by local, I don't, I don't know if it was local around the Upper Valley or where my neighbor actually lives because I live in condos and so some of my neighbors like have have multiple places they live <laughs> so the next little chart that she got was able to get for the two bucks was a dimensions kit and I thought I had a picture of the kit I do this kit does not have the fabric that came with it or like the needle or anything but here's the so I have this chart now and I have the full chart it ca also has some of the thread 
but it has enough of the thread that I don't think the person finished the chart, but they finished enough of it that I don't think I can, I don't have enough thread to restart it. So I'm going to do a conversion and, and use regular DMC threads. So I know some of you guys have said that you keep this thread and I have thread from different like Mill Hill kits and things like that, but it's, and now I have lots of thread like this. What do you do with this thread? I know I'm going to use it for small projects, but do you have small projects like that you could recommend that are cute or weird and wacky? You know, I like the little haunted little motif so that I could use this thread for because I'm, I'm definitely going to have to, to en enable to do this entire chart I will have to have done a conversion which is okay to DMC and I I think I have found out how to do that how to convert dimension threads to DMC so I don't need that help but any small <coughs> small ideas you guys have so then she also got me this little chart pack and it came with thread that I don't really know if the thread is color fast but this is a sweet little chart kit and it doesn't have a copyright date but I'm thinking it has to be a while ago. So this is actually a stamped cross stitch kit. Whoever had this, like it's really mildewy. My guess is either someone had this at their lake house, because I live next to like I live next to a lake. So it's all stamped on there. Or someone had this in their barn because it smells really mildewy. And so the process I just did will take mild did for the castle. Will also take mildew out, I think. The only problem is is I cannot do it right now because as you know, as those of you who've done stamp cross stitch know, if this gets wet, it's done. So it has like a little spinning wheel. I don't know if you guys can see that. Anyways, that's so it's so cool. So I'll read to you what it says. And I'm definitely going to do this. I just don't know how I'm going to clean this. It says, around this hearth, I hope will flow a great deal of love, a friendly glow. So welcome to our fireside and share with us who here abide. So as I'm, I have told you guys, I heat by wood. And so I was thinking about having this in my living room or near our wood stove. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, so it's really, it's really a cute thing. I'm now looking at this and I think there's a sequins in it. And I wonder where that would go. Just one. So maybe this was from another, the sequins from another project. But just to sort of show you what type of thread it is. I have never seen this type of thread. Perry Lusta, six strand. Has a US registered patent. This thread does. Isn't that cool colors? I like it. I'm going to do it. I think it's a cute thing. Have you guys ever taken like a stamped, so this is what they've given me, a stamped embroidery or stamped cross stitch and done it on a different piece of fabric? How would you do that? Like if I didn't want to use this fabric or I wanted to do this again, how would I go about making that happen? Any suggestions would be lovely. Thank you. Thank you in advance. So, the final thing I think she got me 
Now remember, all this was like two bucks. Not bad. Not bad at all. Was, I've already lost it, a piece of 12 by 12, 22 count Hardinger. By Regency Fabrics. So guys, I have never done any Hardinger work. And I know 22 count fabric is pretty common in Hardinger stuff. So here's my question. Do you, and I've always wanted to try Hardinger stuff, but I'm a little bit intimidated. I've never had a project where I cut the threads. So if you guys have any suggestions for small little patterns that a beginner person might be able to accomplish, that would be great. So let me know. I have only, I only have a 12 by 12 piece of Hardinger cloth. That, that's not that's, that this is the only piece of cloth hanging out in my house that doesn't have a purpose. So suggestions would be welcome. So what is in store for me next week? So next week I want to figure out a way to keep track of which whips I'm working on on which day. If I cross stitch every day, it is really easy for me to remember what I did the day before. That's okay. However, if I cross stitch today, but life happens, which doesn't happen to all of us, and I don't stitch for three days, I then have a problem of remembering like, oh, hold on, which whip was next in the rotation? What stitch alongs am I doing? When's the last time I did a, my wine and whip update? That kind of thing. So my husband uh, uses Google Calendar to keep his life up to date. Things he needs to do every day, etc. So I'm, I'm wondering, and I'm going to try it this week, would Google Calendar be okay because it Google Calendar is right on my phone right like almost the first page when I pull up it's my Google Calendar so if I were to mark in every day which whip I worked on would that be helpful I know some people use the X stitch app and then that has some capacity to do the same thing but I don't want to have to open an app Go and see when the last time I worked on things was and all of and that kind of mess. I just want to be able to look at something and say, oh, I worked on the Afghan yesterday. Today I need to work on this. Or three days ago, the last time I stitched, I did touch the Alessandra ne uh, Needleworks advent calendar. I need to go to the next whip. So... If you guys have any other suggestions besides Google Calendar as to what you do to keep yourself on track with whips, I'd be happy to find out. I'd be happy to know what you guys do to kind of keep that organized in a quick way for yourself. I will be working more on Q is for Queen. And I'm hoping I'll be able to start T is for Turtle this week and also get uh, some work done on S's for snail. I will hopefully finish this week's Diachalong pattern. And this Diachalong comes out on Monday, so I'll get a new pattern Monday. Um, and hopefully finish that before we talk next Saturday. I, oh! Oh! I almost forgot to tell you guys. I also found out this week there is a new craft store opening up in West Lebanon, New Hampshire. So as many of you New Hampshireites, Upper Valley people know, or people in the Vershire, the, there is a big box craft store coming to the Upper Valley. It is actually going to go where Books A Million is now 
and Books A Million is where Borders used to be uh, near Price Chopper. But there's going to be a big box store there. Uh, I don't even feel like I should even say the name. It's just a big box store of craft store. So that's exciting. In the Upper Valley, we don't normally get a whole lot of big box stores opening here. So it's kind of exciting to think we'll have something other than Joann's. And I'm hoping they'll have a larger cross-stitch selection. Right now, my Joann's has like one aisle that's cross-stitch plastic canvas. It's really not even whole aisle. So they have DMC and a couple Krennics, but that's it. And then they have a limited selection, very limited selection of fabric. And they have more, last time I went, they had more fabric than they've had. So they had like a 25 count uh, linen. They had a couple of 18 counts and then they had a, a, a wide array of 14 count Adas. Um, and they have some like sandwich cloth type of things and, and towels that you could cross stitch on and those type of things, but not a whole like selection of colors or variety. Um, I have heard other people say that this other big box store, box store had more variety in cross stitch stuff. When I went to one in Michigan, they had a wider variety of things. So we'll have a big box craft store, and that'll be good. And I'll go and, and see and see what it's all about and if it's better or not. And good. However, I then heard that we are going to have a store opening called Scratch. And it's going to be a craft supply and maker space here in West Lebanon. It's going to be in Lebanon on Hanover Street. And the picture they first showed for it was a piece of embroidery. So I'm interested to find out what they will be offering too. I think they said their grand opening party would be like on Jul on September 1st. So I'm wondering if they would do like a soft opening sometime in August. You know, you'd sort of do like a soft opening workout kinks, workout kinks before you have your big little party to really do your grand opening. So I'm hoping they'll have some embroidery supplies, cross stitch supplies. I'm tempted on their Facebook to just outright ask them what will you be having? I know the maker space will consist of a few sewing machines right now and some place to do artwork. Eventually, their hope is to have a 3D printer in there. So I don't, I can't tell you what that's going to mean for us. But I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited to figure out what that might mean for us. So stay tuned. Stay tuned and we'll see what happens with that. I'm hoping it becomes, it's obviously not going to be a needle workshop. But even if it becomes someplace that has a few extra selection in fabric and a little bit of selection in specialty floss, that would be cool. Um, maybe it'll be a place where people could meet and cross stitch in the upper valley. Um, if you'd be interested in meeting up in the upper valley of New of the Vershire to cross stitch, let me know. Um, I think we probably could meet at one of the libraries. Uh, if I was very, if I, if I, could talk them into it. Maybe we could even meet at the airport at, on the general aviation side, but I probably couldn't talk them into that. But we can find somewhere to meet if you want to meet up uh, in the Vershire, Vermont, New Hampshire, Upper Valley area. Let me know. We'll make it happen, Captain. 
So if you've made it this far, thank you. Thank you to all the new subscribers. And I had so many sweet, sweet comments on my last video. And I thank you guys, as always, for watching. I hope you guys have a great stitchy week. I'll talk to you later. Thank you.